Hi, I'm Ángel Gurria Quintana, and I'll be reading an excerpt of my translation of Dulce María Cardoso's novel, The Return. This novel was published in 2011, originally, to great acclaim, and was subsequently published in English by McElhose Press in 2016. The novel is set in 1975, at a time when Portugal's colonies in Africa are struggling to become independent nations. And so, suddenly, almost overnight, hundreds of thousands of Portuguese settlers are forced to return back to Portugal, a country many of them had thought of as a motherland, only to find that they're not really welcome. Most of them were put up in hotels, luxury hotels, and then left to languish there. So this is a story with great modern resonance. The story is narrated by Rui, a teenage boy who is among those people, those returnees who has come back from Angola to Lisbon. The fragment I'll be reading happens uh, somewhere in the middle of the novel. It's a point at which many of these returnees are gathered in a hotel room watching the television and hearing the news that Angola has finally become an independent nation. Uh, Rui, the teenage narrator, is among them. And uh, as he hears the news, he is also wondering what might have happened to his father who had to stay behind when he left. Father died. The television room is full. People are sitting on the ground, on chairs, standing by the door, leaning against the wall, perched on the window sills. So many people that the room looks smaller and darker. The crystal chandelier is switched off. There are only the opaque wall lamps and the glare from the television lighting up the faces of those who are closest. Goretti's hair looks blue. Francisco's face looks washed out. Senor Campos's ears seem to be glowing. Today is a day. Today is a day of Angola's independence. Angola is finished. Our Angola is finished. I don't know why I'm watching television. I don't know why I'm here. The men have pinned black ribbons to their jackets. It was Pacasa's idea. Today I'm in mourning, he said. Today my country died for me. Today I became uprooted. We live with a certainty that our country is forever. We live with a certainty that our country, where we buried our dead, will always be ours, and that our children will never be without the country where we gave birth to them. We live with that certainty because we never imagine that our country can die for us. But today, my country died for me. Today I have lost my dead and my children have lost the country where we gave birth to them. My children are uprooted like I am. Pacasa shuts up and Senor Belchior starts talking. I'm in mourning for the country where I became a person. Before going there, I was nothing more than a belly filled with hunger and a head covered in lice. Not all men are wearing black ribbons. Joao, the communist, isn't. Those lands did not belong to us. It's only fair that they are handed back to the people we stole them from. And on television, some revolutionary is saying, the empire is coming to an end. Our shame is coming to an end. Today we can say we are proud of Portugal. Long live Portugal. I'm not wearing a black ribbon. I don't know what's fair. I feel no pride. I feel no shame. And I don't even know what they're talking about. The only thing I know is that they killed father. But nobody knows. Mother sitting in the third row chair doesn't know. My sister sitting on the floor doesn't know. I can't live hoping that father will arrive. No one can ever live always hoping for something like that. Whoever you are, you must exist so that I can stop hoping. Whoever you are, 
I know you exist and I will stop hoping. Whoever you are, you chose to kill my father. Father died. <laughs>